You have mail. Let's explore custom networking in Fabric. Alright, we found ourselves back in Shelter once more, and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about custom networking, a absolute banger of a topic, and also can be quite important. Now this is part two of our adding of a thirst system to Minecraft, and once again, this is going to be very interesting indeed. So let's start with the networking aspect. We're first of all going to make an example packet that we're going to send that's just going to do one thing. And then we're going to, well, continue along a little bit with the drinking stuff and the thirst system, but not too crazy. So let's go into our tutorial mod package. We're going to right-click new package called networking. And then inside of here, we're going to create a new Java class called the mod messages. So that's just how I basically call all of our packets. You could also call this mod packets. You could call this networking messages, whatever you want. I personally prefer to call it mod messages. Whatever your name you choose is fine. For each message we have, we need an identifier. So we're going to make a public static final identifier from net Minecraft util over here. And we're basically going to call this the drinking ID, for example. And that's just equal to a new identifier, tutorial mod, mod ID, and then of course a name. And it's going to be drinking in this case. Let's just duplicate this. And we're also going to have a thirst sync ID because we're going to need to synchronize the thirst later, thirst sync, of course, changing the name here. And this is just going to be an example ID. This is just going to be the example ID called example. Because as I've said, I want to make one example here. Now we're going to make two static classes, public static void, register C2S packets. And we'll make another one. We're just going to copy this over and we're going to call the other one S2C packets. Now, what does that mean? Now, as you might know, Minecraft is split up into client and server. What we've seen last time with the key bind example over here, right? When we actually press a key, this one right here, this happens when our custom key is pressed. That's great. But this ever only happens on the client and not the server. The server doesn't even know that we've pressed a key. This is why we need to do something, that being sending a message via the networking to the server so that the server knows a certain key has been pressed. And similarly, the other way around, sometimes the server has to notify one client or all clients or all clients in a certain radius about something happening. This is why we're going to have two different register methods. C to S simply means client to server, while S to C means server to client. Now the S to C actually will be called in the tutorial mod class right here. So we're going to call mod messages dot register C to S. So this should be the client to server. Very important. And in the tutorial mod client package, we want to say mod messages dot register S to C. And now both of the methods are called and that should be pretty much what we need. Now what I want to do first as an example, I basically want to send a message when we click our custom keybind over here and I just want to spawn a cow. That's all I want to do because I might or might not have explained this. To spawn something in the world is a thing that only the server can do. If the client could do it, then in theory, you could make a hack client just say, hey, spawn a cow and it would just spawn a cow because the server would just be like, okay, that's fine. So this is why it only happens on the server. The client pretty much only does input as well as rendering. That is pretty much all that the client does and everything important happens on the server. So what we, in the C2S packets method, we want to call server play networking, not the add-on, but the networking right here, this one. And we want to call the register global receiver. We want to pass in the example ID identifier. And then here you can see we need a channel handler. Now we could make a new one in line, but I personally don't like this. I personally want to make a packet. So what we're going to do is we're going to just keep this error for the time being, and we're just going to go into our networking and I'm going to make a new package called packets. We're going to go into the networking package, right click new package, and we're going to call this packet. Inside of there, we're going to make a new Java class, and this is going to be the example C2S package. Now you can see the naming convention. You can of course name them whatever you want, but the convention I personally go with, with expressing what it does, then from where to where it goes and then ending it with packet just so that I know that it is a packet. Here we want to make a new public static void receive method. The method signature here has to be exactly correct. We want to do Minecraft server or server. Then we want a server player entity called player. We then want a server play network handler called handler. We then want a packet byte buff called the buff. And then last but not least, we want a packet sender called response, a packet sender called, called response sender. Let's import the packet sender over here. 
and that should be fine. And now what we can do in the mod messages is that we should be able to say example C2S packet colon colon receive and no errors should be present if, as I've said, the parameters here are correct. Let's just change the name over here, response sender, there you go. And now the crazy thing is the following, everything here happens only on the server. So inside of this receive method, we are definitely on the server because what has happened is that a packet has been sent from the client to the server and this receive method is called when that particular packet, in this case, our example C2S packet has been received. Then this method is called and now we can do basically whatever we want to do on the server. So in theory, what we can do is we can just spawn a cow. So we're going to say entity type dot cow dot spawn. The server world will get that through player dot world. Then we're just going to say null, null, player, player dot get block pass, spawn reason dot triggered, true and false. And I believe that that should be it. There we go. So we're going to get an error here on the world. What we can just do after the world, we can just do dot cast. And then it should already suggest to us the server world. We're just going to double click and there we go. Now we can just cast the world over here because we know we are only on the server. This always only happens on the server. Therefore, we can just cast it without even checking, basically. If I now were to send this packet from the client to the server, the server would spawn a cow. So this, of course, would be horribly broken. So definitely don't add this to your mod. This, once again, is just an example. So how do we then send that packet? So first of all, we need to somehow know where to send this packet from. Well, in our case, I actually want to send the packet right here when I press my key. So we're just going to delete this and we're just going to say the following. We're going to say client play networking dot send. We need to supply it an identifier and a packet byte buff. So the first thing is going to be mod messages dot. This is going to be the example ID. And then we're going to make a packet byte buffs. So this one right here dot create. Because in this case, we actually don't want to send any additional data because if we actually take a look at this, this doesn't use any additional data. We're going to see one example where we actually do send some additional data, but in this case, we actually don't need to because we only basically want the server to be like, okay, this is this type of packet. Let's do this. No additional data needed. And that is actually literally all that we need to do to properly do this. So now a custom packet will be sent when we actually, when we press our custom key, we're going to send the example ID packet, which is of course linked to the example C2S packet right here. The receive method will be called and a cow will be spawned at the player's position when we press our custom key. So as a first step, let's see if that works and then we'll continue afterwards. All right, finds us back in Minecraft. And now in theory, right, we have our custom key that we've added last time. And if I go down, you can see it's the, oh, of course it's called the drink water key, but right now it should just spawn a, it should just spawn a cow at my position. So let's just press O and there we go. A cow has been spawned. And yes, I can spam it and multiple cows will spawn because that's basically how it works, right? The server just executes what we've ma basically made. And it also is only on the server. And we can actually see that those are real cows if I kill it you can see I ha I do have an item and you know I can also then throw the item around this pretty much shows that yes actually this is a normal cow and it has been added via the server and not just like a client ghost that can sometimes also happen but in this case it actually spawns cows so that's pretty cool that's the first step but let's now add some drinking stuff next Right, so hopefully that's a really cool example for a packet here in this case. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to comment this out because now, you know, we want to go into a little bit more of the drinking stuff. So for this, what we're going to need is just a packet that will somehow, you know, drinks some water. Now we're not going to save anything at the moment, but we're still going to add it. So in our packet package, right click new Java class. And this is going to be the drinking. This is the C2S packet and let's just see what we can come up with here. So of course this is going to have the same method as this one because we're going to send it from the client to the server. So I'm just going to copy this over and once again let's actually keep this comment over here. You know then we know that everything here happens only on the server side and then we can just like generally think about what we want to do right. So of course we want to make a thirst system. So in theory what I want to do here is I want to be if I'm in let's say two blocks of water, let's say for the sake of argument, right? If two blocks of water are somewhere around me, then when I press the drinking key, I want basically the player to drink. So first of all, let's just get the server world here as a variable, just to make this a little bit nicer so that we don't have to type out get world every time. And then let's think about this, right? So in theory, if there is water around, I want something particular to happen. And if there's no water around, then I want something else to happen. So so basically we want to know whether or not the player is around water. So let's just say is around water. And then let's think about how we could like actually 
assign this variable to something proper. So there's a really cool thing in the in Minecraft. We can basically get block pass dot stream so we can get a stream of block pass via a block box over here and this is really cool because we can actually make a box around the player so we can say stream dot and then we can say player dot get a bounding box you can see this is a box over here right and what we can do is we can expand its size so the bounding box of the player should be i think just one one but what we can do is we can for example say hey let's expand this to size two so that it basically encompasses two into every direction around the player and then with a stream, what we can do is we can map this. We can get the block state of each of those positions. So if this is a little bit confusing to you, don't worry. I will try to explain it after I'm done with this one more time. Then we can filter and can say, hey, if the state is of blocks.water, then we're going to convert this into an array. And then we're going to just check if the length is bigger than zero. And then we know the player has water around them. Now, once again, what is this craziness? Well, this stream right here, the first one, so the first line over here, block pause stream, and then passing in the bounding box and expanding it by two basically gets you every block position in every direction for a length of two around the player. That is the general idea right here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to convert all of those block positions into block states so that now after we're calling the map over here, right, this one in this case, if I put a dot over here, right, you can see now we actually have a stream of block states instead of block positions. Having the block states, we can now say, hey, we can filter and say, hey, let's go through all of the block states that we now have and only keep the ones that are water. Then we're going to turn all of that into an array. So now we have an array of block states and they should only contain block states that are of type water. Any one of them is water. So that means that if there's at least one in there, right? If the length of this array is more than zero, then we know, hey, we are around war. So that is, of course, a completely custom thing to that I've done. Hopefully this is somewhat understandable to you. This definitely requires a little bit more Java knowledge than just, you know, a beginner, but still pretty awesome indeed. Now, personally, I actually want to get this into a new method. So we're going to right click refactor extract method and we're going to call it is water around them. That's what we're going to do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add an integer, which I'm going to call the size and we're going to call put the size over in here just in case we ever want to change this, right? Then it's a little bit easier to change for us. And then what we can do is we can immediately make this an if statement. So if water is around them, then we want something particular to happen and else we want something else to happen. So if we do have water around the actual player, we of course want something to be like, you know, notify the player. Maybe we want to play the, play the drinking sound. And we might also want to do something like output how much thirst player has. We might also want to do something like actually add the water level to the player, right? So that we actually change something. So we can do pretty much the first two of those and the last two we can only do after actually saving some data on the player. But we can notify the player, no worries. What we can do is we can just say player.sendMessage text.literal and we're just going to say drank water. Now, to actually make this even better, what we're going to do is we're actually going to introduce some more strings over here. So we're just going to make a private static final string. And this is going to, bring, and this is going to be the message underscore drinking underscore water. And we're going to make this a string. And this is just going to be message dot tutorial mod dot drank underscore water. And this, of course, once again, is just the translation key that we're going to use. So instead of making a literal one, we're just going to make text dot translatable and then passing in the message drink water. Right there we go. So now we're notifying the player that they were drinking some water. Now let's also play the let's also play the drinking sound. I'm actually just going to copy this over because it's going to look pretty much the same anytime. So you can see we're just taking the world play sound. We're making the player null because otherwise the player would not hear this sound. We're going to play this at the position that the player is in. We're going to say that this is the generic drinking sound. This is the sound category players. Volume is half of it. And then we're also going to just, you know, make a random pitch over here. Now, one more thing I actually do want to do for the send message or message over here. I actually do want to call fill style over here. And then we're going to say style dot empty dot with color. And then we're just going to say formatting dot dark aqua just because it's look it will look a little bit nicer when this actually is going to be sent and then also let's do the false over here so that it's not going to be shown in the action bar i don't actually think that we need the false over there i think that if you don't put in the false then it's going to be not shown in the action bar 
per default, but, but it's just going to be a little bit nicer like this. Right, so as I said, these are the two things that we can do at the moment. The other two down here, we actually can't. Now let's think about what happens if we are not around water. What do we want to do? Well, we still want to notify the player, right? We still basically want to do the same thing. We want to notify the player, but this time that there's no water around. Let's just copy over the send message from up above, and then we need, we need to have another message. So we're just going to say message underscore no water nearby. And then we're just going to say pull this no underscore water. And then this is going to be the message no water nearby. And maybe let's make this red to get a little bit more emphasis over here. Of course, in this case, we actually don't want to call the play sound. That makes a lot of sense. And that is pretty much all that we need want to do in this case. We just want to notify the player, hey, there's no water around. All right, let's add those two messages to our translation here. Ian underscore US JSON file, right? Once again, message tutorial mod drank water. It's just basically what we're defining right here. This is the key. And then the actual output is going to be drank water and here no water around. I think that that's going to be pretty good. And that should basically notify the player as to what is happening here. Let's make sure that this packet is properly registered as well. So in our mod messages, we're just going to once again call server play networking dot register global receivers. This time it's going to be the drinking ID. And then the second parameter is going to be the drinking C2S packet colon colon receive. Ending it with a semicolon and there we go. That should be pretty much all that we need to do right here. Now to call this when we actually press our drinking key, we need to go into our key input handler once again. And then once again call client play networking dot send mod messages dot drinking ID and then packet byte buffs, actually packet byte buffs dot create. Because once again, we're not sending any additional data over here. We're just basically sending a blank byte buffer in this case. And that is actually all that we need to do for our custom packet. Now, once again, this is not complete, right? We're not adding any data to the player just yet. We're just quote unquote drinking, even though it doesn't do anything, it just outputs a message and it plays a sound, but it's pretty exciting nonetheless, because of course the thirst that the player has, you know, it actually needs to be saved on the player. And we're gonna do that in the next tutorial of the series where we actually save the data on the player. But for the time being, let's go into the game and see if we can actually drink water. All right, so we find ourselves back in Minecraft and let's just for the sake of argument go, you know, outside of water so that I'm not near water and we're going to press the drink water key. And there we go. We got the no water around, well, output basically and also no sound. Now, if I'm close enough to water so that I can drink it, right, I'm going to press the O key again. And there we go. We both heard the sound as well as the drink water right here in the dark aqua, well, basically output and we can see, you know, we can basically see at what sort of, you know, location this is it. So right here, you know, I would be close enough to this one that it's basically, you know, two ish blocks away. And there we go. So that's really, really awesome. And that is pretty much how easy it is to add some custom networking to Minecraft. So of course, those were two examples where we actually send something from the client to the server. In this particular tutorial, we're not going to have an example sending anything from the server to the client. We're going to see that in the next tutorial because we're actually going to need that for synchronizing the server and the client thirst data once we've actually implemented it. For the time being, it is not needed. Hopefully the networking stuff was still kind of understandable to you. It can be sometimes very, very complicated to sort of understand how everything works and how everything is going. But for the time being, hopefully at least this will serve as a very good first introduction to networking. I highly suggest just playing around with it a little bit as well. But for the time being, this would be it for this tutorial right here. Hope you found this useful and you learned something new. And as soon as it's available, you can continue with the next tutorial when we add the thirst data to the player. And I hope I'll see you there. So yeah.